And Jeff, this is an idea that I love, that you can be nice and <laughs> still get ahead. There are a lot of people who don't agree with that, though. T tell me where you came up with this. First of all, most people think that in order to get ahead, you have to be feared, you have to be mean, you have to be tough. You don't think that's the case? No, I don't think that's the case. And <clears throat> I, I thought that just before the uh, the commercial break that you sound a little bit skeptical, but you sound more hopeful now. So uh, I'm hopeful. glad to hear. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there, you, there used to be a, a regular feature in Fortune magazine 25 years ago that talked about the, the 10 toughest bosses in America. They stopped running <laughs> a century ago because they they realized that those people weren't performing well. We never see those lists, at least hopefully, anymore. <laughs> I was just recently in a boardroom. We were looking at two different succession candidates, and the debate was, is is, uh, is he tough enough or is she too tough? And uh, that uh, it isn't necessarily one or the other. Can they be loved or respected? There was a, a classic uh, Napoleonic Harvard Business School professor uh, back in my era back then when I was working behind enemy lines there who used to say to classes, Thousands and thousands of Harvard MBAs were told, well, you can either be loved or respected. And he thought he was quoting Machiavelli. He, he turns out, uh, you know, he was wrong. A lot of people get that wrong. I'm out here at the close of the, of the Milken conference, and Milken was advising people, go back to the original of these things, and you find they say something different. And I know you, uh, Becky, and Andrew, remember I, I used to uh, pull in the Milton Friedman article from 1970 to say people are misquoting what he actually yes. About shareholder primacy is that he said, you know, invest in the communities as well. Similarly, Rudyard Kipling never said East is East and West and West and saying that East and West can't get along. He has the message just the opposite. And Machiavelli's message turns out to have been different. If you go back to what he what he actually said in The Prince in chapter 17 and 15, 13, is that it's best to be both if you can. If you have to make a choice between them, he said, be respected over being loved. But you can do them both, and that's the ideal. We've got lots of the CEOs that we admire most on this show match that. Do you think that that has, has changed? You, you mentioned this Harvard business professor um, and how that was kind of beat into the, to the leaders over the years, the people who went on to become leaders. Do you think that that has changed at this point? If you, I mean, you know all of these CEOs pretty well, Jeff. W would you say that the common line of thought right now is that a kinder, gentle, gentler leadership is, is in vogue at this point or not? It's a balance, not necessarily one or the other. And I think we used to consider somebody like Howard Schultz perhaps as more of an outlier uh, as, at Starbucks or uh, thinking of Bernie Marcus, uh, the founder of, uh, of Coke, right. or, right. he and Arthur okay. Blank. They were. They used to all their, their their annual shareholder meetings were called corporate love fests. They were actually a lot of fun. They're revered, and you can find people like Sam Walton and others. This was always sort of the classic landmark of who they were. To these days, Mary Barra of uh, General Motors, uh, Indra Nui of PepsiCo. They're fine. You can do both. Bob Iger of of, of Disney. That you can do both. And uh, surprisingly, a lot of people in the airlines. Doug Barker today, like like the late Herb Kelleher of years earlier. Doug Barker, American Airlines. Doug right. Kelleher. Of, Southwest, David Nealman, of course, of, of JetBlue fame, and, and he's gone on hey, to other airlines. Since. Hey, Jeff, but here's the thing that I can't figure out. You have companies like Starbucks, uh, beloved, have done lots of things for employees over the years, and now you have uh, remarkable labor movements across the country, including at Starbucks. So, for example, in Buffalo, there's a labor movement against Starbucks. This is a company that's done amazing things in terms of providing education and health care uh, to, to their workers long before any, anybody else was ever doing it. Uh, Southwest, a company that was beloved, supposedly, now uh, having battles with their own employees and labor and their unions. So something, something is happening here. Even, even the ones that, that we put up as examples of, of doing the right thing for employees and being loved may not be anymore. And I don't know if there's a shifting, shifting wind here. Well, did they get meaner? Or did employees take advantage of well, their niceness? This like, is the question. The good, very good question. That it's Becky's a really got. good question. I was hoping Becky was going to answer it for me. Uh, <laughs> but four things at play there. And uh, I know it's always dangerous to do a list on the show, so don't feel like you have to hear them all. But one of them is, of course, the economy has changed and the leverage between uh, the managers and the managed has shifted. We now have, with these scarcities, people have extra cloud, extra power in the workforce, and there needed to be some adjustments in, in, uh, in wages with workers, so that's some of it. Secondly, uh, I used to actually teach labor relations back when we had a, a more of a larger organized labor movement uh, afoot, and and what we found is that 
labor organizations were it was it, the efforts were most successful depending on the quality of local supervision that it tended not to be mm -hmm. the leadership at the top but sometimes you have some rogue abusive bosses on the front line that are uh, that are a problem for for management and that's that's often an issue and third there are some management that are not anti-union I, I don't know believe it or not ups invited the teamsters to organize them back in 1919 with their founder uh, saying you can be a great UPS or and a great teamster, that these were not antithetical to each other. But it's a good question as we're actually seeing something different happening in the workforce today. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.